Um, this is your forecast for October 2015, and this will count for Scorpio sun sign, or if you have an ascending sign of Scorpio, this will also work for you. Um, October 2015 is your pre-birthday month, so you're finishing things off, but it's possibly the best month of 2015, especially starting with the new moon. We're all in a mode here to maximize luck and continue with upgrades. That's my advice as much as you can. Now, the first part of the month is in red, which is not so good, but then it's, it gives, gives way to the second part of the month, which is green, and that's good. So we start the month. This is kind of a red date. Um, until October 9th, Mercury's retrograde, and for you, you're just sorting through a miasma of all kinds of complex things connected with spirituality, dreams, and prophecy. You're trying to, all these things rattling in your heads. You probably feel like a Ouija board, you know, in your brain. And so that's really creative and really interesting. You don't have to go to movies, but it's also just, you know, complicated. So you feel like you probably can't think straight. Now, um, that's one thing. Then to add more to the mix, we have the um, Mars forming opposition to Neptune. And this is a very odd coupling. In this case, Mars is in your 11th house, so you're, you're breaking into more groups. You have more action with benefactors, patrons, and friends, and that's great. But then also you have this kind of magical sense of your own talent, and th that could get a little left by the wayside unless you pay attention to it. That is, your friends and your group activities could dominate things, and yet you might feel a little uh, self-conscious about bringing some of your talented things to the group. So you have to figure out, you know, you kind of pave the way, and you figure out a way to bring that into a group context. Uh, October 4th through 9th, the sun is square Pluto. Squares are a little more difficult than oppositions. And in this case, sun in your 12th house is just like the Mercury working on spirituality and dreams because this is the pre-birthday phase and you're coping with a nemesis with something that's disagreeable to you. But meanwhile, in the third house, you are so good at meetings and visits. You have expertise here. So uh, in terms of any kind of communication, you have power. You have great wealth of, of attributes and probably a few trade secrets so that you can always rest on that even though you have all these things rattling around in your, in your brain or your body. Um, you can always perform. You just are kind of like a bionic in that regard. Uh, things get better October 6th through 16th when, um, in this case, your, your benefactors, patrons, and friends seem to work really well and really appreciate the type of work that you're doing in connection with meetings, visits, or media work in your communications. So you may get some praise. You could even um, start to make more money in connection with this. Now, m October 9th, Mercury goes back to prograde motion. So some of these cobwebs in your brain are getting straightened out a little bit and it seems a little easier to get through your day. Um, October 12th is the new moon, and this new moon is conjunct the star Spica. We're gonna find out about that in a minute. It's a really lush, wonderful star. This new moon, because you're in the pre-birthday phase, you're still in the zone of spirituality, dreams, and prophecy, which could be really meaningful, you know? So take note of some of these dreams, and, um, and a lot of what you're doing to sort things out is be, uh, engagement or research in connection with science, agriculture, or, or philosophy. And some of the scenes or the areas that you're working are culture, music, and art. Uh, some of the issues are hope versus cynicism. Of course, we always want you to come out strong in, if, there, if hopefulness works, and certainly hopeful and wishful are some of the trademarks of a new moon, besides being a tabla rasa, open and receptive, that there is this great potential for hope and wish, wish fulfilled. The introversion factor of the new moon is something to be reckoned with because if you can get out there and get things going, you're definitely gonna be at an advantage. Um, the new moon is so the, the, there's this kind of great experience, um, leftover residue that from the first half of the month, even if you had to confront scandals, betrayal, or distractions, you had a stronger character. So you can move forward and bring the stronger character and emotional discipline to arenas of culture, science, and justice. Um, so the 12th house here is still very active, at least until your birthday. And you always need extra rest and boost your immune system before your birthday. Um, October 10th through 14th, 
here again, um, the new moon is, had, is opposed to Uranus. And Uranus in your sixth house means that you've got this kind of wacky uh, job situation and, and you have some unusual ideas about health and healing. And those could work. They could be futuristic. Not everyone will understand them, but if they work for you, that's great. Plus, you could be developing a whole new system of accounting and, and possibly something really innovative in terms of a whole new set of of um, um, ethics and morality. So that's really interesting. And that can help you cope with all that 12th house, the pre-birthday and, and all these vivid dreams, which can be overwhelming. So um, this is kind of neat though. October 4th, 14th through 20th, Mars conjuncts Jupiter in your 11th house. So you could become more popular. You could gain some benefactors, patrons, and friends. That's always good. This is thought to be a very fortunate part of the horoscope. And then, um, then a little bit later, Venus conjuncts Jupiter, so even more so. So as much as you can, get out to these parties, whether they're Halloween parties or they're just harvest parties or whatever. This is a really great time to socialize, meet new people, and get active. October 25th through 29th, the full moon in your house of partnerships. This could be a very romantic time, so you want to be you know, extra considerate towards your partners and, um, and, and be uh, you know, really active in a social life, maybe do some public outreach for your community, but also be aware of the competition and be a diplomat because the full moon has a lot of drama. Full moon is near the constellation Andromeda, so you can really enhance your partnerships and social life by doing some outside the box thinking. Also, it's near the triangle, so the, uh, this is interesting compassion and justice oriented, and that will definitely uh, inspire more love towards you because everybody loves a compassionate, justice-oriented person, right? And then um, in, in, the full moon is also near the heart of the whale. So to really empathize with someone, to feel their pulse, what is, what is their life about? You know, another way to really endear yourself to somebody. And lastly, the, um, of course, we all need primal instincts and also idealism. And this is very strong on this full moon. And in this case, you could be either being a good role model, or you could help your partners or people involved in your social life to increase their primal instincts and, and if appropriate, idealism. So just a fabulous time. We're forming a grand trine with all these planets, very active. So October's great. November's a whole different story. Um, so maximize your opportunities in October because we all have to get a little stoic and, a little, and sacrifice things in November and toughen up. So, I hope you maximize benefits in October. My name is Victoria Martin. Thank you very much for listening. That was a good